Hey guys, Sammy here, and today I have a new video for you. Top 10 items new players waste their money on in Wizard 101. I've gone back and forth between my friends and associates, asking them what they all thought, and we compiled a top 10 list. So starting from the bottom of things that might not be so bad to spend money on, but still kind of rip off, we have reagent bundles. So there's nothing really inherently wrong with reagent bundles. You're getting exactly what you pay for. Sometimes even really great values like frost flowers, scales, or not scales, fish fins. These are scales. Those are equally good to have. But one of the really good ones on here are the sandstone, because you can make sandstones out of those. They're about a little bit more than a pack, like they're just slightly more than a pack. Uh, but you get 100 reagents. Now, the reason these are kind of cheap is because you can get reagents really easily just running around and uh, collecting them. They're not uncommon. You can get tons of them so easily. Cattails got 150, got 270 skewers. Like you can see, my mushroom counts nearly maxed out. And I don't really actively go after reagents. I know some people who do, but I'm not one of them. So you can get them very easily without drying. So that's why they're on this list, because new players don't really know any better. And I'm losing my voice because I was singing a lot last night. So number 10 was reagent bundles. Number 9, most of the elixirs. Now let me explain, because I got a lot of backlash when I said I was putting elixirs on this list. I'm not including energy elixirs. Double pet experience elixirs, double gardening elixirs, even though I think double gardening elixirs are kind of a waste, and pru elixirs, those are not what I mean to be including on this list. What I mean to be including are the elixirs like, and not even the membership elixirs or the cast elixirs or the 50 elixirs or the expanded princess elixirs. I mean the elixirs that are older, the storm battle elixir, the battle elixirs in general, major gold elixir, mana elixir, this one really is truly a waste of money, the health elixirs, most of these, and especially the fishing elixirs, most of these are completely wasting your money because you can get them almost effortlessly from events. You, oh, this is the wrong one to show you. All right, normally you have a pet promenade and spiral showcase, and they're giving you tons of elixirs. And you can get elixirs from Scroll of Fortune, and they just tend to pile up and pile up and pile up. I've got three pages on this character. My shared bank's full of these things, and they just tend to bog down your inventory when you don't even need to really try for them. Plus, most of the time, you can get elixirs that you need in a specific scenario from the specific scenario themselves. For instance, one of the places that's kind of difficult to fish in is the Fantastic Voyage little fishing area. But upon completion of the gauntlet, gives you an elixir which would be very beneficial to fishing in that place. See right there. So number nine, elixirs. Don't buy elixirs. Number eight, most crown shop gear. Now I got a lot of pushback from this one too because people wanted to spend very specific and situational gear sets. Again, when you're higher level and you can decide, oh, maybe this piece of gear would be very beneficial to me. Yes, I'm sure when you get high enough level to decide what you need and what you want and what you can get and can't get, 
that is different. And you want to look on the wiki for the cure piece that you're considering buying, because 9 out of 10 times it drops somewhere. One of the gear things that are in the crown shop that's really, really, really good for low levels, it isn't even a set, is the Watchtower Boots at level 5 for 720 crowns, the Jacket of Withstanding for 1,200 crowns, and the uh, Midsummer's Cowl for 960 crowns. These will easily set you back around 3,000 crowns, 2,000 crowns, somewhere in that ballpark. And it's not a bad set. It's, it's, it's your goal. That's what you want to be working towards. But you're not going to want to buy it because it drops very easily from uh, Nightshade in the Storm Green Tower, which is this building right here. This tower right here. Inside is a death boss. His name is Lord Nightshade. And he has about 500 health. Most high levels can just one-shot him without even enchanting. If you're deaf and you're low level, you might have a hard time because you don't get your prism until a little bit later. But you still should be able to farm him pretty easily and get team-ups really easily. And you can just get the gear set. I've gotten the full gear set on my balance, as you can see. And I got it from Storm Drain Tower. So you don't have to break the bank to get the gear set. And most of the gear in the crown shop you can get from bosses without really having to try that hard. There will be a few exceptions of bosses that just don't want to drop it, but most of the time you're going to have smooth sailing. And there are many different gears in the crown shop. Various hats, boots, shoes, sets. One of the more popular ones is called the Overlord's Attire. And one thing I want to point out about that one is a lot of people get it because it looks really good. I had it for the longest time. And it's all zero level and it would cost you 3,000 crowns to get it. However, the appeal to this one, of course, is that you can get it at a low level and it looks really good and you can stitch it to your actual gear. However, what you can do is go to the bazaar and buy a knockoff look-alike. That is high level, you can't use it at the moment, but you can take it and you can stitch it and that'll only cost you 300 crowns versus the 3,000 crowns. And it literally looks exactly the same. And you can do that with most of the gear sets in here. I remember my friend gifted me, my sister, my cousin Kat, and our, our friend Amy Lexi there, a couple different crown shop outfits. I got this one, Lexi got the monk one, Cat got the Elven one, and Sav got the Swindler one, and literally all of them can be farmed for, or you can get equivalents from the crown shop, just like this one. So that's why you don't want to buy the crown shop gear. There are very good situational pieces that are really good for stats, like... The Splendid Attire, I'm looking at it and I'm like, where did I? Oh, it's right there, recommended. The Splendid Attire is really good for energy if you don't want to farm for the Green Warden's gear. But again, this is all really high level gear. And a new player just wouldn't, it wouldn't be smart for them to buy that. Number seven Vaults and Monster Domes. The reason these are on the list isn't because they aren't extremely useful to have. The reason I put vaults and monster gems on this list is because in the crown shop, to get a vault or a monster dome, 
is 2,500 crowns for the Monster Dome, nearly 2,000 for the Jewel Vault, and nearly 2,000 for the Gear Vault and the Seed Vault as well. These are extremely useful items to have, so you might be wondering why are they on the list. Well, a new player isn't going to immediately have limited res limited storage. They're going to have their attic, they're going to have their bank, they're going to have their shared bank, their dorm, their other characters they can make to hold items. So they're not going to really feel the strain of having to wrestle with your backpack and your attic as a lot of us do because a lower level wizard isn't going to have that struggle of trying to find room for everything and by the time they reach the point when they do then they can craft them and you can craft the gear vaults and the jewel vaults and the seed vaults and the monster domes and you can get the recipe for that from Toshi and Mushu. And that's him right there. So next up is number six. Holiday wands. These are ones that come and they are going to bring the bank. I kid you not. If you want to collect them. Because there's one for every holiday. And the cheapest ones are 300 apiece. And when I say every holiday, I mean every holiday. Easter. Valentine's Day. Christmas. Of course Christmas, you know. St. Patrick's Day. And of course Halloween, which is the most expensive one because he has the most to offer you. Being wands and that very coveted stitch and various costume pieces so you're gonna want to go back to storm drain tower again and farm away because you're not going to want to spend all that money on these when you can get them for free and you're only even going to wear them sometimes so now we're getting into the top five number five rental mounts rental mounts are another one of those Things where you can see yourself getting a mount as a drop from a boss or from daily assignments or a pack and you're like all excited you're like oh my gosh I opened all these packs you've opened all those packs and you see the mount and then you see seven days or sadness happens when you realize <laughs> it's a one day one it's a seven day one and it'll go away, and then it's gone, and then you don't have any more. And I can show you, you get those really easy, so there's no reason to even buy them. Because I've gotten all of these free if they're on this character. Yeah, all of these free. I got Chocolate Moose 7 Day, Chompy Bronto 7 Day, Flying Dutchman 7 Day, Gloom Thornvine 7 Day, Multiple Gloom Thornvine 7 Day, Panda 7 Day. All these, these temporary rental mounts. Um, they're just going to fill your heart with sadness and broken dreams because they're not permanent ones. And they will leave you, they will break your heart, and you don't want that. Especially when a rental mount is going to cost you like 2,000 crowns. Some of them are 3,000, I don't know what, I know there were some 3,000 ones in here. Yeah, the Pegasus is 3000 Super expensive rental mounts. When if you just go a little bit higher, you can get a permanent one for 7000 or 6000 And what's worth noting as well is you can get some from gold. And like I said, you can get permanent mounts. From drops i have a video coming out about that later this week hopefully so if you don't want to be buying rental mounts that's just dumb number four skeleton key bundles this was a kind of obscure thing they sometimes do and when i say sometimes i mean sometimes because they don't always do it it was announced a while back that they had this really cool can my text please be on top of that so this was announced 
a while back. I can't remember exactly when it um, came out. But they introduced the new concept of skeleton key bundles in the crown shop. And it says limited time only, but it does come and go. And whenever they come, I see so many people get like just bamboozled by these things. And it's just, it's like, oh my gosh, like my nerves are being tested every single time I see it. It's like, Bruh. and it's especially annoying because veteran players know they give them away free, like pretty periodically. They give them away in July and they give them away again in December. And they drop from everywhere. They drop from Kraken and Triton Avenue. They drop from Achilles and Cyclops Lane. They drop from Prince Alicane and Fire Kid Alley. And they drop from a bunch of bosses and Colossus as well. So please don't be deceived by the keys. Don't be deceived by the keys. They are going to break your heart. Number three, pets. So in the crown shop, you have many different pets, and some of them might look really tempting to buy. They look really cute. They give a spell you want. They might be super rare, super cute. Like this one, like, oh my god, that's expensive. You can get all of these pets by either fishing or hatching or daily assignments. Like, I have a Stormhound right there, and I can assure you I did not spend a penny on it. I got it from Fishing in the Stormhouse. So if you go to the kiosk, you won't see them because they're crown pets. But if you go on Discord or many other fan sites or something, you can easily find people willing to hatch crown pets with you. Most of the time, for free, and you just need gold. I will put some links in the description of places you can go to get Good pets. Restoration, I know, has a lot of pet hel helpers or pet hatchers, I forget what they're called. So there's no reason for you to spend absurd amount of crowns on pets, even when they're brand new. Let someone else do it. Someone else doesn't watch my channel. Now we're getting to the really juicy ones. Number two, starter bundles. So in the beginning, these might look like they're a really great investment because you get a full set of seemingly really overpowered gear immediately an amount and a wand right out of the gate but these are lies they are really expensive it's really the price of the problem and i've heard a lot of other people talking about this as well why are my keys still here go away lots of other people have been complaining about this for the same reason that i'm putting it on this list you're getting something that'll last you probably a few days and it costs more than a permanent amount, which you would have as long as you're playing the game. Now, when you actually look at the stats on these, some of them are pretty good. Everyone really like the fire one for that fire wand. It gives 10 fire damage, which is really OP. Like, that's like the same for a fire as the Sky Iron Hosta from Omen, which is a level 30 wand. And it gives fairly good damage in the wand as well. Like, if you want to buy it just for the wand, I think that's really dumb, but you can. But again, look at what other people are wearing, ask around, see if you, if you can get some opinions on something before you consider buying anything from the gear section. But in general, these starter bundles are just trash, and they're wasting your money, so don't buy them. Now, for the number one item that new players waste their money on... gold now in the crown shop it offers the option of purchasing gold for crowns i really wish they'd remove this they actually have removed some of the options that were available before before you could buy eight thousand gold for something and you can buy something for 500 crowns and i think 800 gold was something in eight thousand they have reduced that. Now you only have the bulk of like 10,000, 20,000, 50,000. But you would be surprised how many people just blow money on gold. And that is dumb because in if you go on Discord, you can trade crown items, like gift people things, for empowers. And you can then use that empowers as currency. Empowers sell for about... 
4,000, sometimes 3,000, sometimes 6,000 gold. And you can get a lot of empowers for not a lot of crowns. You can probably get more bang for your buck, like way more gold for crowns you're spending. If you go on Discord trading servers and try to trade for, like say, I'm selling crown items for empowers. Let me know what you want, and you will sell out at exactly what you need immediately. Like, you'll get people banging down your door trying to get you to sell them crown items, and you'll get so many empowers, you can sell them and be rich. Like, seriously, you would never believe how many people see this as something that's valuable. And I kid you not, I did not ask for this. This was just given with good intent but not so good intelligence. Now before we end the video, I have a few dishonorable mentions, and a lot of these people have been telling me I should put higher on this list, put them higher on the list, put them higher on the list, but I couldn't do that because I just think some of the other things were far worse wastes of money than these items. So with that, we have packs, housing items, and plants. And I will explain to you the pros and cons of each of these right now. So with plants, there are some really good plants that you really want to have, like tons of, get as many as you possibly can. Couch potatoes are one of them. However, this costs 1,500 crowns. And you don't need to do that because Couch potatoes can be acquired in many ways. Two of the most popular ways is fish for them. Pretty much every bundle house has the opportunity of giving you couch potatoes and fishing chests pretty commonly. And then the other way is daily assignments. That's another way you can get them, and it's, again, pretty common to get them that way. There's also the opportunity to get them from fighting monsters, and you can get pink dandelions. You can get everything from monsters if you look up which monsters drop it. And a good tip is to look at an item you want, say for example a teleporter, and then Google the item and see if you can get it any other way aside from the crown shop, and most always you can. Which is why I don't like to say this game is pay to win, because you can get everything from another way. It's just that a lot of people are impatient and lazy and they'll buy it before they actually try. Covers housing items too, same thing. And lastly, oh boy, packs. Packs are one of the more problematic items in the crown shop, you could say. With players all trying to get them for a very specific purpose or item, and they just don't get it. Like, people will spend 85,000 crowns on packs. So, hey, sometimes they'll even spend more. Like, if you go on YouTube and look up pack openings, it's not long before you see the long, long list of people spending outrageously large amounts of money trying to get a specific item and it just won't give it to them and at some point they just begin like raging because they are not getting the item and they are spent all their money and they don't have any more money and they don't have any more crowns and they did not get the item that they wanted and it's just infuriating because no, they just god! they're just not getting it no god please no no no! No! And there's literally nothing they can do if they want that jade gear, if they want that gold gear mount, if they want, I don't know, XYZ, they have to get the packs for it. And I myself am super guilty of something I'm honestly kind of embarrassed of. A long time ago, I did, like, like at least six pack openings, and they were all Dragon Horde packs. I was desperately trying to get a Dragon Riders Myth played, and I was desperately trying to get the Dragon Wings and the Dragon Bone Dragon Mount. And I must have spent like upwards of $300, and I 
I was like really ashamed. I, was, I, I almost did all of them because I'm honestly ashamed that I spent that much money on packs. <laughs> like I'm, I'm kind of laughing, but it wasn't funny. It was more just sad, like pathetic. And I was so pissed. I didn't get a single freaking anything. I got so many of the shoes, so many of the hats, and that whole pro that whole time I just kept going in and going in and going in and going in, and I wasn't getting what I wanted. And it's honestly one of one of my more humiliating moments and things. I'm like, I almost did them so you won't judge me. Bruh. But you're probably going to judge me anyway for that. Since then, I have learned very valuable tips and tricks for that. One of which is the Accursed Playhouse Comet. It drops wings. And it also drops the swords. And you can get the, sword, the ice blade, fishing and unicorn ring. And the commons. And my sister and I both farmed the mirror in triton avenue during the lost pages event and we both got the bone dragon permanent from this and her friend is saying no way because literally just went in and she got it in my third or fourth time or was it she might have had to go a little bit longer but she didn't have to farm it nearly as long as i did And as for lore packs, you can get all the lore master spells from lore master and then a couple other ones you can get from other bosses. And you can craft a couple. Most of the stuff you get in the packs, you know, you just kind of throw it in the trash. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you found this educational. And let me know what you think if I missed anything in the comments or if there's anything on this list that you feel isn't a waste of money. I would love to hear a different perspective, though I think I covered it pretty unbiased and pretty accurately. Be sure to like and subscribe, and if you made it this far in the video, comment. I love spending crowns. Even if you don't, it's, it'll be ironic. It'll be like our ironic thing. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you through the screen. Ta-ta!